Hello everybody. Last week I showed off the Gamble Comics hat. And I've been talking about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. But let's reveal the beautiful thing that is coming to Indiegogo.com for the second printing of Everlasting Survivors. The Everlasting Survivors t-shirt. So, not only will we have a new Jeff Hicks cover, a Fabri Ferdinand cover, trading cards, and posters, you can also get a hat and a t-shirt on Indiegogo.com when the second printing goes live. Thanks for tuning in, and let's go to the review of Wanted. Now that the intro is out of the way, here's Brandon, and uh, we are going to retro review Wanted. Yep. Uh, Wanted is a 2008 action film starring uh, John, Lots of people. Yeah, James McAvoy as Wesley Gibson, Angelina Jolie as Fox, Morgan Freeman as Sloan, Chris Pratt is in it also, pre-famous Chris Pratt, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and Thomas Kretschmann as uh, Cross. Yeah, Cross. That's a good... I like that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really good. Um, I don't remember the actor from anything else. I'm sure that he's probably done a bunch of other things, but... Uh, Resident Evil Apocalypse, have you ever seen mm -hmm. it? Well, damn, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, uh, yeah, he, he's not somebody who... Like, everybody else, I can say, oh, this, this, and this, but... He did a good job, but mm -hmm. I, I can't say that there's anything that I specifically remember him from. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the story of Watchmen, or sorry, not Watchmen, of <laughs> Wanted. Maybe later. Yes, of uh, Wanted is about, uh, Wesley Gibson. He's getting put into or recruited into the Secret Assassin Guild. Uh, they're uh, called the Fraternity. Yes. To hunt the man that killed his father. But is he? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, I think the, the heaviest part, and, well... The thing that makes it so significant that he gets recruited is the fact that he is literally every nobody on the face of the planet. Yeah, he's pathetic. Yeah, he's pathetic. <laughs> the, the, <sighs> so I worked at a call center for, I don't know, not a month, not a month, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that I lived Wesley's life there for that very short period of time. Of just feeling pointless, like I'm wasting my time. Yeah, of feeling that, that is a not a good place to be. Not needed, unwanted. I mean, pun intended. <laughs> I, I mean, like girlfriend cheating on him. I mean, he has a miserable life as far as just like he has a job, but it's well, one of the funniest parts in the early on is when he checks his ATM and it's like it's like basically making fun of him for mm -hmm. how insignificant he is yeah yeah uh and also uh side tangent but on the movie the thing that i love about wanted is the the title sequence appears when he finally quits his job mm. and then it frames to that uh newspaper and it says wanted on it with his picture that's like the title cue yeah. is you know how movies usually show it at the beginning yeah. but this movie waited like 45 minutes or whatever well not just that but that. it was so really many cool. times that that uh title sequence and uh credit pre-credit i don't even know what you call it when it's at the beginning credits obviously is the end but the uh the billing there we go the billing at the front mm -hmm. can be such a mundane waste of freaking time i know that uh recently i watched a movie and i was like you could have done so much more with this instead of just Pointless background and text. Yep. Oh, buddy, that was not helpful at all. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, uh, the film opens up very action-heavy. It shows a guy working in an office, but then people are just getting taken out left and right. You're like, oh, what's happening? And you see the camera like, woo, 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 fluctuating, and you see this guy running super fast. He's shooting, curving bullets from, and it, it is just amazing. I love that. I'm that not, trying to, be, action I'm not trying to be crazy negative mm -hmm. right up front, but, uh, spoiler, I'm going to be negative. Mm -hmm. The opening sequence gives us something that we never get again. The the running of... Oh, him super... Well, we kind of do. Where? In the factory. 
when Wesley uh, blows up the rats in the uh, dumpster and he's running through, it's supposed to symbolize him going super fast. I, I hope but, so, but, but man, I just didn't is. feel it. I, it. Nothing ever gave me that uh, Flash, if you will, vibe uh, for the rest of the film. There mm -hmm. were plenty of uh, uh, bullet tricks and uh, uh, things, but like I never saw anything, once again, that felt like the, the run through the hall, the bus through the window... Uh, and land on the next building. Over seeing, I was just like, this feels like a one and done. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I would have rather not to even establish it if you're not going to do it again. Okay. Okay. I mean, oh, so, the gimmick in this film is that people essentially have superpowers, kind of. Where they're able to have a oh, uh, could, high could, reflexes. Could, could, could it be the force? I feel like it's the force. Basically, yeah, the force. Their, their reflexes are heightened to an, a high degree. And uh, where they can curve bullets, uh, Mythbusters busted that. So if you're wondering if it's even possible, no, it's not. <laughs> can I can I drop the line now, yeah. or should I wait? Yeah, yeah, go. I just feel like this movie is Star Wars for the Fight Club generation. I just feel like it's subverting every expectation of the hero's journey and says, "Hey, do you know that nice wholesome thing that people know and love? Let's filthy it up." I honestly, I, I think it's Harry Potter. Oh, for for the new generation with guns, <laughs> yeah, basically. Right. Yeah. I mean, it kind of follows, you know, Wesley is not necessarily a chosen one sort of thing. But, but he is specifically chosen yes. for a given task. And since this movie came out, what, 12, no, 2008. 20, 22 years ago? No, no, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah, 2008? Yeah. No, no, it'd be 18, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like... What, 14, 14 years? Yeah, 14 years. 14 years ago. No spoiler alert needed because... Wesley's recruited to kill his father, mm -hmm. not his father's killer. Right. They uh, they tricked him into believing that Cross, who killed the man in the beginning of the film, they they said that that was his dad, but truly Cross was. And Cross is trying to stop the uh, the sin Fert 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 fraternity. Yes, the fraternity to. Um, uh, He's trying to get them back in line with what their stated goal was, mm -hmm. which is to. Um, Follow a higher calling, if you will. Right, with yarn. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, but the, the thread is just the thing that sends them on said calling, just like I said, a force or a, a sorting hat, whatever whatever magical thing you want it to be, whether it's Harry Potter or Star Wars, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because the things make believe. He just wants them to follow their own teachings or... Uh, creed? Creed, there yeah. we go, I like that, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, follow their actual creed. And uh, that's another thing I'll get to. But yeah, go ahead with your uh, your layout that you were thinking on. Because oh. we're jumping around in the story. Yeah. Well, I mean, the story is basically that. And, and, it's, oh, okay. uh, and it's the fraternity teaching Wesley his skills, his ability. Because he's very um, nervous. He gets nervous and his heart pumps. And you see the camera uh, wobbling all over the place. But they try to hone that in and tell him like, hey, you aren't a loser. You aren't this, and and steer him on a path. Well, and the craziest part to me mm -hmm. is he doesn't know who he is, and when he comes to that realization that I don't know who I am, part of me thought, oh, that's interesting, but then another part of me thought, this is very much the whole militaristic mindset where I will break you down so that I can make you do what I want. Yeah, build you, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. actually, yeah, I do. Yeah, so, I see that. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I'm very conflicted. I think that the, I I don't think I know that the movie is visually spectacular. Mm -hmm. However, I just I can't get past feeling as though that it's uh, morally bankrupt. I, I I almost think Cross is the most upstanding of all of the characters introduced, and, and it might only be because we barely see him. Yeah, actually, yeah, I yes, because I I want to feel for Wesley, but. When he doesn't feel anything, even after he kills his own father, yeah, it's like it's really a struggle to to to, to relate to him, right? And yeah. I want to, I do, and mm -hmm. I th I think part of that might just come down to editing. Uh, I think because whomever edited it was going at such a fast yeah, pace, they rushed that. Because yeah. don't get me wrong, the movie it does just hit and hit and hit, and it's and it's going so fast and furious. <laughs> that uh, maybe that's why we don't have that emotional resonance of the moment, but I don't know. I, 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 the, first, the first half to me was paced very, very well. 
and I think the movie kind of unravels is when uh, the train fight, when uh, Wesley finally kills his dad, mm -hmm. and then he jumps down, and from then on, it moves so fast that you really don't. No, uh, I yeah, I fully yeah. agree. Yeah, because yeah. the beginning of the film, it's like very tight, tight. Yeah, but then right when he kills his dad, it just rushes it, and I guess that's. To like, hey, we don't have that much time, maybe budget or whatever. But I do, I do agree with. Oh, with thanks. That. Cool. I, I wasn't sure. We didn't talk about this before uh, before we got here, so uh, I didn't know if I'd be hanging out there off the train and you know falling to my mm -hmm. death. But I, but to me, as a character, I do like Wesley simply because he didn't know who he was, and he just went from one extreme to the other without ever thinking, and finally at the end. He becomes his own man, so to speak. Or he's like, "Hey, you you make what you do with it." Well, and here's well, here's the other weird thing about that. He, at the end of the film, which there is no sequel, I don't think there will be. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end of the film, he has a new mentor. It's not Sloane. It's uh, Cross's friend, oh, yeah. uh, mentor. I don't know what his role specifically was, but he's the man who helps him in the end mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know. It's the ending is just so hard. Everything after the train scene is so hard to get cohesive. Uh, uh, there's one part after the train and before the climax where uh, Fox uh, hears Wesley give a speech to them and how they've they've fallen from their their plan, and she is turned onto not necessarily onto his side, but turned back to their ways because it's revealed that all of them uh uh every one of the assassins has come up to be assassinated mm -hmm. and so fox uh curves her bullet to kill every one of the assassins except wesley and sloan just because they're not within the path yeah of the, the circle bullet. yeah the circle because they're right. yeah um so i guess to some degree you could say that she follows through with it the 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 foundation of their their beliefs, but even then, I ha I, I I once again have to question how, or not how, but is this is even what they consider right right because everything seems so wrong mm -hmm. uh, while viewing it. Yeah, and actually, I, I to me that is kind of the thing that I like about the film because it's what is right and what is wrong and. Which is, it's very fuzzy because it's like, hey, you're following something, but you're, they're following something that they don't even agree with or necessarily believe in. So what's... Yeah, this? And they, they clearly yeah. show, uh, especially Sloan, the leader, shows that he doesn't believe in what they're preaching. Mm -hmm. hmm. and, and it's like that weird thing. It's like, hey, what... It, is this like a, uh, a televangelist uh, allegory? Is this like a practice what you preach thing because they don't i don't know i yeah kind of but i think i just think that the film is kind of saying that hey uh there's all these things put in place for you to follow and that you need to break break from that and be your own own person and i just think that it's it kind of rushes it mm -hmm. in a way and the theme of the film kind of loses focus of that. 100% like, yeah, loses like, focus, that's for sure. Because the beginning of the film is all about Wesley, like, hey, he's a loser, but getting that confidence and breaking free from well, that one cycle. Um, speaking of him him breaking free, the moment that he confronts his friend who was sleeping with his girlfriend... Yeah, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, exactly. Uh -huh. um, that That is like the, the emotional high point of his... Um, his growth. Mm -hmm. when, when he... Lays it down. Even Chris Pratt's character says, "That's the man." And so he goes from being what we all, as viewers, and he, the character, feel is a loser, to being acknowledged as more than uh, he ever was. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the the the, the height of his growth. Um, he once again does that when he realizes that the uh, fraternity was wrong, but again, not with the same payoff. Uh, emotionally speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and l like, let's just, so you have the butcher, you have like different characters that like beat the crap out of, yeah, the gunsmith that just beat the crap out of Wesley. 
And I guess the the raid scene of him going through is kind of him getting revenge on all these people that like abused him. Uh, I'm not even sure if the film is even about different abuse because it's kind of all over the place. And just not very clear. Yeah, and not very clear. But I did like like him finally standing up for himself in a way that he did to his friend and his boss. Right. To how he stood up to Dude, the people I gotta, that did the, that. The boss stand-up scene was equally, if not better than the, the friend one because, I will say equal, because I won't say better than, the friend one was very... I love that the friend was on his side, mm -hmm. but the boss one was so, it had such gravitas because he says to her about how that he knows she treats all of them badly because of how badly she must feel on the inside of herself and, or something of that nature. And when he go goes to that place of, uh, if you weren't so bad to us, we'd feel bad for you. For you. Right. And it was like, that is such a relatable, uh, I, well, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a I'm, I'm, yeah, who I hasn't? Yeah. I know exactly who hasn't. But like everybody can relate to that boss that you you just you're like you're so viscerally like I know that you're no good at what you do. I don't even know how you got here, and you're it's bad. And when he when he confronts her and he and he called her out, it was, it yeah, was it, it was good. It was perfect because she was always with the stapler in his ear, just yelling at him and just causing him so much anxiety. And, and you could just see Wesley's pain mm -hmm. and, and everything that he was doing, but he could never just, like, tell her to shut up and stop because he's like, hey, yeah, this you, is my boss. Yeah, because you're scared. I mean, I mean, going back to the ATM scene, I, I know I've had times in my life, and, uh, you know, right now I'm not back there, but the, the higher things go, the harder it gets. I've had times in my life when, when I'm like, I, I don't even know how I'm going to get to work because I don't have the money to buy the gas to get there to... Mm -hmm. To not be able to afford to live. So when he, again, it goes back to the ATM scene where he checks it and, and it's basically mocking him for how lame he is. And so in a, in a time like that, in a moment of uh, that kind of pain, of course you can't confront your boss. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't even know how you're going to eat when you get paid because you're, you're so broke. Oh, yeah. Everything's so uh, hard to uh, live. So, yeah, no, I, I think that that confrontation... But, again, all of the really emotional high points are at the pre-halfway point. Mm -hmm. Like like Brandon said, once you get to the train scene, it just lose, it runs off the track. Yeah, literally. It just is so fast, and it, it it's not bad. I don't want to say, like, oh, it's horrible, like yeah, all the yeah. films. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> as a reminder to those who have not watched uh, my prior movie reviews, I have a system. Five stars is great. Four is good. Three, that's fine. Two, it's passable. And one star means it was a fail. Zero stars is it was absolute trash. Mm -hmm. um, I personally wouldn't give it five stars because of the, the latter half and the just questionable... Uh, the, the goals. What are the goals? It's kind of hard to figure it out. And, uh, and, and because of that... I give it three stars personally. What okay. you, where, where are you leaning to? Uh, so I lean on that it's four. It's good. Absolutely. Um, and let's talk about just real quick, like the camera work and soundtrack, oh. because the camera work spec freaking tech. Yeah, it's directed by T, uh, Timur Beck Mambito. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but it's directed by him. I'm not sure what other work he's done, but he did a great job. And I know everybody in the film. Wanted to do a sequel, but it just never really. I didn't yeah, know that. yeah, yeah. James McAvoy wanted to return the director. Cool. Everybody wanted to do a sequel, but well, I mean just... that guy never ages anyway, so you really could just pick it up any day. Right, and how everything's multiverse <laughs> so, now or whatever. Yeah, exactly. and it made a lot of money back, especially back then. Dude, for... I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. So I know it's based on a comic, but unfortunately, I never read it. Have you? Yeah, you did. Yeah. How, yeah, how did how did you feel about the book? Uh, I didn't like the book at all because how. Uh, his dad is actually a bad guy. Like he is a bad guy. He's oh. not good. Oh, he's not. He's yeah. not the the. Re yeah, he's not the redeeming character no. that we see. In no, he's actually is a, a a bad guy. He's a horrible guy. Wow. Yeah. It. it I, I would just say, uh, read it. I oh I plan to. So I looked it up, um, day or two ago. Mm -hmm. It looked so very um the boys. It reminded me a lot of the boys. There mm -hmm. were uh, there were characters I. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I feel like there was a guy like, like uh, not pile of shit, but like his gimmick was like he's just 
waste. Um, and there, there were just like spot on characters. So it just felt very, <laughs> not to be uh, passe, but comic booky. Mm -hmm. Whereas the film itself tries, <laughs> in my opinion, to be very The Dark Knight. It, it wants to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Like the, none of the the characters, even if they're gimmicky, like the the gunsmith or the butcher, are over the top. They're very. You could probably bump into the butcher at your grocery store, right. or uh, you know, uh, definitely Angelina Jolie's fox could be Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Yeah, any random girl that's walking around with <laughs> tattoos. You're exactly. Like, okay. <laughs> so, um, so I I feel like within the context of the film, they tried to to stay within that real framework. Mm -hmm. what, what about you? I mean, because I didn't outside of the Kerman bullets thing and that one runny jumpy thing. Uh. I felt that they played with it sometimes and sometimes not. For instance, uh, there's a car scene when Wesley's uh, chasing after the dude in a limo. And he realizes that oh. the dude's smoking a cigar. And he steps on a brake while Sloane steps on her. He steps on the gas while Sloane steps on a brake. And then they flip the car over yeah. and shoot him. It's like, okay, that's very comic book -y. Well, and here's the... Like, here's I, th like I think I'm, the, my problem is I'm looking at it from 2022 eyes. Had I been thinking about it from a, a 2008 perspective, you're definitely right. Mm. But in 2022, we live in a world post Fast and Furious 6 through 10, plus a couple of extras. And even though it's not comic booky, they do all those gimmicks. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that's my problem is that I, I've i separated vehicle funness yeah. <laughs> from uh, over the top. Hey, actually, I was just thinking about maybe that they didn't make a sequel to this. Maybe because they just felt that this film is ultimately is a gimmick. Oh, that, yeah. That, hey, this curving bullet thing was going to get kind of redundant and people really didn't like it. So they just kind of... Well, and there, there is something to be said about one and done. Mm -hmm. I, I got to say, there's something to be said about doing something, doing it well, and just stopping. Yeah, like Constantine. They just did that one. Well, not just that, but The Matrix. One really great movie. And after you that, two and three. What yeah. about them? Yeah, two and three. Yeah. What? Yeah, I mean, I I watched them, but were they great? No, they were just yeah. the same thing over. They were, like you said, the same gimmicks, the the very similar repetitiveness. So, I, I, maybe it's to their benefit that there's only one wanted, whereas everything after the Matrix kind of faltered. Yeah, it went slowly downhill because it's like, how can you, how can you make a, I guess, a masterpiece even better or and it's so hard yeah, to and do. And the freaking ending. I, I can't believe we're doing this, but the freaking ending of the Matrix where Superman's up into the sky, and you never touch that again. Yeah. That's why it should have been one and done. Yeah, I mean... Anytime I introduce people to the Matrix, I, only, I just, just watch the first one, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the second one's a guilty pleasure. The third one is... And... There's so many, <laughs> there's so many pieces, though, of, of the, the follow-up films that are good outside of context mm -hmm. just pieces of those films where it's like wow that's great but not as films just as shots and scenes they're so good but like yeah as overall films those that's where the problem lies. yeah i mean I, so to me yeah i mean for the matrix of the season reloaded i just like the themes of the movie because it touches on kind of a good thing but that's yeah trust me I, we ha we can talk a lot about the matrix because that was like my favorite movie franchise when when I was growing up, really, like, yeah, yeah. So I know like a lot about like the creation and the stuff. I have all the really ready. Oh, the Enter the Matrix yeah. was so good. Uh, I have the Animatrix. I just love love the Matrix. So, are, we, are we changing topics? Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Let's. Uh. Yeah. I can talk about the Matrix. We'll, all we'll day, do it another but, time. Why not? But yeah. But the Wanted is yes. like one and done. Um. There is something to that when it's just because I think that they. They went back to that theme of hey, because Wesley they uh, he he hired somebody to look alike to look up his oh, name, yes. which was great, and it brought back that theme of mm -hmm. hey, you're trying to find yourself again, and it's like no, and he did, and he blew Morgan Freeman's brains out, which was great. It was a setup, but again, it's it's visually nice, but it, it's a, it's it's definitely a like how did the song get so stupid? 
to fall for it. Right, and you know, there's an X mark the spot right at his feet, and he I mean, didn't again, realize. If you just let it go, if you're not trying so hard to think about it, it's it's pretty. It's mm. so pretty, and if you're if you're into pretty, the soundtrack's good too. Oh, great. when 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 uh, Fox and Wesley are riding on a train, and he doesn't take the the kill the first time, but he does it the next go around. It just it feels momentous, and so. Go ahead, sir. Well, no. Well, I just had actually something. Maybe you didn't th- uh, didn't like it or didn't think about it that much with, with Cross. How do you feel about the absentee father type of thing where he's like, oh, I'm doing this to protect you, but yet he never really, uh, like, I think I feel like they, I feel like they convey the concept of his protection when they do the the visual representation of Wesley remembering how things actually played out. And mm. that Cross wasn't actually trying to kill him. It was that uh, Fox was always in the way and, like, this, that, and the other. And so I, I feel like that flashback, even though it was quick, was enough for me to to to, to believe that he believed it. Mm-hmm. So I was okay. Okay. And I, I don't know. I don't have that... I don't have that to relate to in a personal sense, so... I don't know, like, it, I didn't, I wasn't devastated by it. Okay. Um, and like I said, I believe that the character believed it, so. Yeah, because, like, Cross basically kind of, uh, he didn't kind of, he just, uh, he didn't leave Wesley, he was always literally right next door to him, watching his for his protection, but he, he wanted to finish his job of wiping out everybody there first before he was, like, He's like, hey, I'm your dad. Yeah, exactly. You know, I've been gone for like 20 plus years. So, hey. That <laughs> sort of thing. Which right. is kind of funny. But yeah. I mean, I, I give this movie a four simply because uh, the soundtrack, visuals. Oh, yeah. Uh, I did like the story, although I just felt that it kind of fell apart a little bit. It just rushed it mm-hmm. towards the end. And um, yeah, I, I, I. If I did halvesies, which don't, just because it's either you are or you're not. But if I gave it a halvesies, I'd be three and a half, but now I'm three. Because yeah. cause honestly, I don't even feel like fine is bad. Like, there are times when I uh, I don't want filet mignon. I, I actually do just want the chicken nuggets. Yeah. They're not they're not <laughs> great, but they're fine. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah. No, if you... But um, we got to do the shilling, so... Okay. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So, if you're in the mood for... Something fun. Yeah. That sounds good. It looks good. Uh, you, you don't need everything wrapped up in a pretty bow. Yeah, outside and, the MCU. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, or DCU. Um, and, and you don't even want to, to... And If we're going MCU, you don't want something that's this high, and you just want something... Yeah, it's this high. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Especially if you haven't. Like, I, I, I have this bad habit, personally, of just assuming people are my age, but I bump into people all the time, and it's like... Oh, yeah, you're young. So, maybe you've never seen the movie. It, it, it was created at a time where they were still trying to figure out how to create these comic book movies yeah, and what true. audience wanted. Mm-hmm. So, I think it is perfect for that where you're like, oh, this is how things were. Like, that you didn't know quite what. They were just throwing everything at the wall to see what stuck. Dude, X-Men. Yes. Like, they changed so much, mm-hmm. but it succeeded. So they're like, "Oh, let's keep doing that." Yep, exactly. It's like the the two thousands, the early ones, whew, big difference from the now. Yeah, where a everything lot. is just like rip that out of the wall and put it on there, and be like, "Oh, we're making that comic." Mm-hmm. Speaking of comics, I have Gamble Comics. Uh, it is the company that puts out Everlasting Survivors, and if you like me and Brandon would like a first printing of Everlasting Survivors. There are limited quantities of the Jeff Hicks cover and the Nick Crook cover. Oh, come on. Don't don't hide your face. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there are some first printing still available at Etsy.com. The link will be in the description. We'll keep, the, keep that. Okay. And when we run out, because we will run out of first printings, there are... On the way soon, second printings. This is the Jeff Hicks se- second printing cover. This is the new artist, Fabri Ferdinand cover. And they will. these two new covers will be available at Indiegogo soon. Along with the t-shirt that I'm wearing, the hat that I got on, and trading cards. Um, oh yeah, the posters. We were just holding the posters. Mm-hmm. All the good stuff. 
Thanks for watching. Um, Buy it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll be back next week. Brandon's going to be here all the time because, you know, he's like my most reoccurring uh, guest. Um, thanks for watching. It's been fun. Bye. See ya.